my name is Apoor and I work with Civic Data Lab. At Civic Data Lab, our goal is to make public data sets more accessible and actionable. We do this by building open data platforms and by working with our partners to process and analyze this data so that public data can be used as a tool for civic engagement. So till now, we've looked at how to process our data. We've also looked at reproducible analysis. Um, we've also used the workflow or practice to structure our project, but we haven't dive deeper into the data analysis or how to use data visualizations to write data stories, which is exactly what we'll learn in this session. So I'm at the overview tab of our project website. The reason I'm here is uh, this tab has linked to all the different data stories that we have written using the constituency data that we have already processed and the candidate data, which is not very difficult to process. And the exact steps are mentioned in the code file, which is on GitHub. Now, uh, we, we will go through all of these different data stories. We will look at uh, some of the things that we learn in this session are first, what are shape files, what are boundary files, how to create maps, how to use ggplot2 to build data visualizations, how to create interactive tables, etc. So first, let's start with the first one, which is in this case, constituencies where women voted more than men. So I'll just first open this uh, in a new tab, just so that we can see what the final output looks like, because that is really helpful. So. We first have the introductions, introduction section where we are just introducing what are we trying to do in this data story. Uh, so there are two levels of analysis that we are doing. First is at a voter level and the second, which, and you can also see this uh, from the uh, index here. The first is at the voter level uh, where we are looking at the gender wise participation in polls. And the second is for the candidates where we are looking at the analysis of the candidate. So first, let's look at the vote level analysis. So the first one is where more women voted than men. So constituencies where women voted more than men. So let me go back to uh, the R studio here because um, so if you remember, we had used this create constituency analysis uh, file dot R to create the constituency analysis. Uh, but now I will also show you the way we have processed this constituency analysis file, uh, which is here create constituency analysis file dot R. So in this file, if you see um, now, if you remember, if you remember the different variables that we had, so let me go back again to GitHub. Now, this was the file that we had created. This was the file that we had created. And uh, uh, if you remember, there were 543 Excel sheets and we converted it into 543 rows. And these were the different variables that were present. Now, if I go back to our graph, it says where women voted more than men. So I'm going back to our studio here and finding out where is that variable. So if you see here, it says constituencies where women, where women votes are more than men votes. So this is the, uh, this is the file where we are creating all these additional variables that we will use them to plot on our maps or on our charts, etc. So let's see the logic of how we are creating this variable. So this is a very simple variable. So what we are doing is we are just creating a flag, which is basically adding a new variable in this file using an if else logic. So if else constituency sub dollar vote voter general W. Now, if, if you go back to GitHub, if I go back to GitHub to view our data, so this is our data and voter general W is this variable, which basically means uh, women votes and voter general M means men votes. Now we are only using general votes here and not any other category of votes. So what this piece of code is doing here is, is just checking where the general votes for women is more than the general votes for men. Wherever that is true, we are assigning, uh, we, uh, we are just writing it as W and in other places, the flag will be valued as M. So this is how we are creating this variable. Now, let me just go back to the analysis sheet, which is here, the analysis of gender wise participation in polls. And I will open the R markdown file, which is used to create this uh, web page. So let me just go back to our studio. So I've already showed you how we create this variable. Now I'm going back to the R markdown file. Now in, in the R markdown file, which you see here, we will use this data set. We will use the variable that we have just created to create a map out of it. Now let's see 
how we do it so before we create a map before before we understand how we create a map uh, think about what is what are some of the important features of a map now a map every map or any map you take will have a boundary or a border whatever now that the border between uh, it, it can be a border between districts a border between states basically any administrative area and then there needs to be some sort of a variable uh, you know that will tell the uh, tell your system or tell your computer as in where to draw that boundary so basically it's a everything everything that we see everything in a graph uh, or every image that you see has coordinates so basically what we mean of uh, how a map is coded is through these coordinates so every border or every line that you see on a map is coded using this set of coordinates and this file which is used to uh, uh, which is used to code these coordinates is called a map a shape file or a boundary file um, uh, you know uh, so that is that is something which is needed before we create a map because otherwise how will you tell um, how will you tell our you know where to plot your variable or where to plot a variable within a map so the first thing to do is create a base map and for that base map we need a shape file now you may ask okay where do we where do you get a shape file because shape files should ideally come from uh, an official government source uh, which is very true yes they should because we are uh, talking about the borders of a country or the uh, or any administrative area for that matter uh, but uh, in our country uh, you know the the maintenance of shape files though has drastically improved over what it was a few years ago though to find such official officials uh, official sources of shape file is sometimes very difficult but to make things easier for us what we have or what we have used is the shape file which is created by an organization or an, uh, or a or a or a group which uh, which is known as data meet now if you see here this is the this is their website which is community created maps of india and from here now what administrative area we need we need parliamentary constituencies now shape files can be present at different administrative areas for example it can be present at the state level district level block level sub district level village level gram panchayat level assembly constituency level but what we need here is a shape file for a parliamentary constituencies and if you remember in our data set there are 543 parliamentary constituencies so in the shape file there will be 543 uh, there will be uh, shape files or there will be shapes or there will be borders for these 543 constituencies now i have already downloaded this shape file and it's a uh, the extension of this file is .geojson that is what we are using now shape files can be present in a lot of different extensions but for this analysis and for this session we'll be using a .geojson shape file now if if you go to github now if i go back to our uh, repository and if you remember that all the data whether it's gis or whether it's your normal data set everything is inside the data folder if i go in uh, to the gis folder here you will see that there are three files what uh, what we have downloaded from the data meet website is india pc 2019 simplified the geojson now this is a file which is used to code the parliamentary constituencies and if i click on this file you will see that a map will be populated here now if you open any other file which is let's say if you open a csv file on github you know you will see the rows that we saw if you open a geojson or any shape file for that matter on github you will see a map because that is how geojson files or shape files are coded and that is how uh, tools like github or any other tools that understand these formats will process these files for us so now we can see all the borders that are there in this file and this is very helpful this this for us is a base map and in this base map now we need to tell or now we need to, uh, let's say if we, if we want to build a map like this that we see here if we want to build a map like this uh, from this file we have to tell uh, r that you know what each uh, what each area represents now an area can be any variable in this case in this particular map our area is representing gender wise participation which is every if 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 you see at the legend for this map 
what does the color represent the color represent the blue stands for more male votes and the green stands for more female votes so that this is what a color represents so now we will see how we can use this information to color code our base map which is here so let me go back to our studio another important thing before we uh, finally use colors to color a map is to understand now the shape file is coming from a very different source which in this case is data meet and if you remember again our data files are coming from the election commission of india websites so now both of them are very different sources now if let's say if i have to merge or join uh both these files now why merging and joining both these files is important because we need to get this information in one file so that we can plot a map out of this file now if i join both these files i will join it on the basis of geography names now because both of these files are coming from different sources there are chances that the names of the geography might differ so for example um in 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 the geography file from or sorry in the data file which i downloaded from eci uh, andaman and nicobar uh, is written as andaman a and d nicobar and for the shape file which i downloaded from data mean andaman and nicobar is written as andaman ampersand nicobar now if if i join these two files using state name this won't join because the names are different so before we can use shape files to plot our maps we have to make sure that the geographies in the data files or any ids that we are using to map or merge these files are consistent and are same across both these files